Malnutrition and pollution have caused a massive increase in the number of children suffering from pneumonia in Afghanistan. Low-income families, even the more common, are forced to use low-quality coal to warm their houses. They are collecting tires, shoes and waste to burn, which is ultimately increasing pollution levels throughout the country. Take a look. The pneumonia ward of Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul is full of sick infants, suffering from lung infections and other respiratory diseases. Children lay on a single bed with their concerned parents and some overworked hospital staff keeping an eye on them. The worried mothers of these children could be seen holding tiny oxygen masks to infants' faces. 22-year-old Mariam is among them. من پیش دکتر بردمش نه بغل بود دو بار سات تفل بردمش شربت دادش جور نشد بار سیوم گفت بستر میشه و یادش خراب است زیاد سنیش زیگ گرفته بود باز بسترش کرد یا یا کنی مزار نخسیش میشد پایین سرک میشه گرفتیم دیگه دکیش من دو بات متفاوتیش نیم میشه خریدی Malnutrition and pollution have caused a massive increase in the number of children suffering from pneumonia. According to a report by Reuters, Mohammed Arif Hassanzai, the head of internal medicine at Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul, said that our patients have increased compared to the past. The main reason is the economy. Low-income families, ever the more common, are forced to use low-quality coal to warm their homes. They are collecting tires, shoes, and waste to burn, which is ultimately increasing pollution levels throughout the country. Malnutrition has also been cited as a contributing factor to the increase in pneumonia and other respiratory cases among infants and children in Afghanistan, causing weakened immune systems. Facing a grim choice between warming their homes or eating, Afghans have been left in pain and hopelessness. Unfortunately, the crisis in the country is likely to worsen. Over 180 international organizations have suspended operations during the crucial winter months as a result of the ban on female NGO workers. These organizations are unable to function in the conservative nation without female staff to reach out to children and women. Returning to its own Sharia-based rule, the Taliban is attempting to erase women from public life and erase any progress made in the last two decades. What they've done is to try to sentence Afghan uh, women and girls to uh, a dark future uh, without opportunity. And the bottom line is that no country is going to be able to succeed, much less thrive, if it denies half its population the opportunity uh, to contribute. Um, and to be clear, and we are engaged with other countries on this right now, there are going to be costs if this is not reversed, if this is not changed. Afghanistan is facing isolation and suspension of humanitarian operations over restrictions on women. The country is in a deep state of crisis. However, the Taliban have made it clear that they will not be reversing their latest decrees. Despite repeated multilateral and bilateral discussions, little progress has been made since the Taliban takeover in August of 2021. So far, 2023 appears full of disappointment and sadness for Afghanistan's most disenfranchised. With each day bringing a new blow, the future appears hopeless and bleak. <laughs>